In the second half of 2020, this global payments company grew its full-year revenue by 28% and EBITDA by 27% in this tough COVID-19 environment. Welcome to MoneyWise Smart's Multibagger Research Series Earnings Updates, where we provide updates on the recent earnings of the great potential multibagger businesses we cover. Adyen is a modern leader in the global payments industry, taking market shares aggressively from the inefficient legacy players. On 10 February 2021, Adyen released its full-year results for year 2020. Before we discuss the earnings, please smash the like button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That will help us a lot with the YouTube algorithm and keep us motivated to bring more of such high-quality content to you. On 10 February 2021, Adyun released its full-year results ending 31 December 2020. Overall, Adyun's business has remained resilient in 2020 despite the prolonged impact of COVID-19 on the world economy. It continued to experience substantial growth, helping its merchants to move their volumes online swiftly when stores closed. There is no major surprise to us on the financial side. However, there are certain key developments in its products and solutions that we are pleased with, which we will discuss in the later part of this update. Here are our 17 key takeaways from the earnings results and earnings call, including an update on the valuation we previously did in 2020. First, before we start it's important to note that Adyen has just adjusted its financial figures during the period 2018 to 2020 H1 to correct for an error on double booking of costs for refused or cancelled transactions in those periods. The details are per below, but the short story is that past net revenue and book equity value had been understated. After correcting this, net revenue in 2019 increases by 38 million euros, or 7.6% from 497 million euros to 534 million euros, the bit in 2019 increases by 38 million euros, or 13.5%, from 279 million euros to 317 million euros. We are not going to bore you with the details, which you can read from the slide, if you are keen. In 2020, Adyun experienced substantial growth as online retail and digital goods volumes surged, although the decrease in travel volumes persisted. Amid the constantly shifting environment of the pandemic, Adyun was able to help move volumes online swiftly when stores closed and facilitated safe operations in reopening scenarios, as all its point-of-sale POS, devices enable contactless payments. This led to a higher total processed volume of €304 billion Euros in 2020 up 27% from the €240 billion Euros in 2019. Volumes from POS a focus area for Adyun in the long term was €32 billion Euros in 2020, constituting a low 11% of total volume, and down from the €29 billion Euros in 2019 due to impact from lockdown restrictions. This point is also illustrated in the CFO Ingo's response to a question on the company's short-term prospects. He replied that, most of our focus is on building relationships with merchants long term. So we don't focus too much on the short term. So we want to make sure that we understand what the needs are of our merchants, make sure that we're ready for it. And the rest will follow. So our focus is on the long term, not on the short term. Along with payments volume, Net revenue increased to 684 million euros in 2020 from 534 million euros in 2019, that is an increase of 150 million euros or 28%. On net revenue growth, North America grew by 70%, greatly outpacing APAC's 30%, Europe's 22%, and LATAM's 6%. The difference in growth rate in each region is mainly driven by the impact of COVID-19 in those regions. One point worth noting is the high 70% growth in North America. Historically, Adyen has mainly helped North American merchants process payments outside of their home markets, mainly due to the North American payments market's relatively static nature. In recent years, it saw complexity increase, especially in the domain of unified commerce. This allowed it to onboard domestic volumes that previously might have been out of reach. An illustrative example is how it partnered with Dick's Sporting Goods to process their in-store, in-app, and online volumes. These are volumes that would not have been a logical fit in prior years, 
but it is now seeing that shift. Thus, this is good news overall for Adyen as the market becomes easier for it to penetrate. To support this growth and future expansion, Adyen hired aggressively in the year, increasing its employee count by 565 people, or 48%, from 1,182 in 2019 to 1,747 this year. Most of the increase was in the Amsterdam office with 350 new employees, followed by 52 in San Francisco. As we shared in our detailed analysis of Adyen in our multi-bagger research program, the company has been adopting a long-term view in building itself, which is consistent with our long-term investing horizon at MoneyWise Smart. In anticipation of further growth, it opened an office in the Middle East in Dubai and expanded its acquiring footprint to include Puerto Rico. However, it is always conscious of not over-expanding in a manner that affects its culture, as the Adyen Way culture is very important for the company's success in the long term. Even with strong new hire activities in 2020 coupled with the challenges of remote working in this COVID-19 environment, the senior management continued to dedicate significant time to the hiring process and virtually met every new hire before joining the team. On the expansion of acquiring footprint in Puerto Rico, we think that this is another example of Adyun really focusing on what's best for its customers, as if the customers do well, Adyun would automatically do well too, since they mainly charge a variable rate on their customers' transaction volume. In 2020, Adyun rolled out its full unified commerce offering for H&M in Puerto Rico, along with Europe, the US and Canada. Adyun's founder Peter and CEO has previously said that in deciding which geographical markets to expand to, they just listen to their customers to see which markets are most demanded by their customers so that they can try to support the customers as best. This utmost focus on customers is what has helped Adyen to succeed and grow well so far. The development with H&M also illustrates the land and expand approach with existing merchants that Adyen has employed since its foundation, which has served it well. In 2018, Adyen first started a global partnership with H&M across key markets in Europe and North America, focusing on online volumes. Today, it has expanded to partnership on full unified commerce offerings across the locations mentioned earlier, leading to much higher revenue from the same customer acquired a few years ago. This is why 80% of Adyun's volume growth in 2020 came from existing merchants, and that 80% has remained the same since at least 2017, along with its low customer volume churn of below 1%. This is an amazing feat if you think about it again. 80% of the year's growth came from existing customers. This means that Adyun doesn't really need to spend much money to grow its revenues. Starting to see how powerful this business is? We have already covered these points before in our multi-bagger research series, if you have been listening closely. For the remaining points of this video, please check them out at our multi-bagger research series at the link in the description below. In that series, we discuss in detail great businesses to own and compound our wealth for the long term. These great businesses have been growing fast in terms of revenue, profits and free cash flows. For example, this global payments company has grown at a compounded annual growth rate, or CAGR of 60 to 80% from 2014 to 2019. Meanwhile, this technology company has grown its revenue at a CAGR of 80% from 2016 to 2019. And this payments company has grown its revenue and profits at a CAGR of 20 plus percent in the past decade. If you have enjoyed this video, please smash the like button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This will help us with the YouTube algorithm and keep us motivated to bring more of such high quality content to you. Do join us in our investment forum on Facebook, using the link in the description below, where we discuss lots of interesting businesses and investing concepts.